And so we get into the final Lethal Weapon film, Lethal Weapon 4. They don't tend to have subtitles with these movies, they just thrash them out by number. But, hey-ho, there you go. This one is once again directed by Richard Donner, who has directed all of these films, which kind of lends a particular style to it, a particular way of doing things, which makes the whole thing feel cohesive. Unlike, say, the Die Hard films, which have different directors kind of popping up, and the style changes a lot. One of the things I like about this franchise. Um, also, we get all the cast coming back with some new additions. Uh, in this case, we get Chris Rock. I think Chris Rock is one of those kind of love him or hate him kind of guys. Um, I I'm, I kind of like him, I guess, in this. I think this was the first film I ever saw him in. I, I didn't know who Chris Rock was until I saw this film. And in this film, I kind of liked him. I thought he was funny. Since then, he's kind of gone on to annoy me a bit. But I still tolerate him in this film. I kind of still like him in this film because, like I say... At the time, when, it, when I first saw this, I didn't know who he was, so I, I kind of take him as this character. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty funny, a um, bit loud, a bit kind of abrasive. Um, but we also get, as the bad guy in this film, Jet Li, who does his usual kung fu stuff. This also was one of the first films I saw Jet Li in. And he makes for an excellent villain in this. He's, he's very quiet, doesn't say a right lot. But what I love is that finally Riggs and Murtaugh get a villain that requires both of them to take him on. Um, with all the previous films, we've always had the, the, the kind of physical villain that always ends up fighting Riggs. And then we get the, the I guess, the mastermind, the intelligent one who's planning it all, that always ends up getting taken out by Murtaugh. Um, so in this case, yeah. We have this, this end fight scene, which is my favourite fight scene out of all the Lethal Weapon films, in which Rig, it takes Riggs and Murtaugh to bring this guy down. And depending on which version of the film you watch, uh, because I know that when I got this on DVD, which what this film was actually the first DVD I ever bought, by the way. This along with uh, LA Confidential, when I first bought a DVD player. Um, but yeah, depending on which version you've got, that fight scene is more brutal um, on, on a different version. I, I don't know why that is, I don't know why they released two, but on, on the DVD copy we got over here, they cut some stuff out. Whereas on the Blu-ray, thankfully we get the full thing. And it's yeah, it's much more brutal, a lot more violent, um, but yeah, really kick-ass. I just love that it takes both of them to bring this guy down. Beyond that, there are some things in it that don't quite um <laughs> fit in with modern sensibilities i guess particularly the scene with um the the i can't remember the name of the chinese boss now um it's just just escapes me but basically it's the scene in the in the dentist when they're kind of giving him the gas and they and they tell Murtaugh that that this guy this chris rock character is the one who's married his daughter and got her pregnant and and there's some confusion because Murtaugh at first thinks that this guy, because he's being so nice to him, is gay and fancies him. Um, and there's a, there's a moment there during this scene when um, Murtaugh says, I thought he was, ooh, and it's like you would never get away with that today in a, in a mainstream Hollywood film because, well, it's, it's quite derogatory towards gay people, isn't it? Um, I kind of like it because... It, it feels real. It makes these characters feel more like real people, not politically correct people. It isn't a quality in Murtaugh that I like, um, as it is not a quality I would like in anybody. But the fact that he does it makes him seem more real. It, it, it makes him seem more like a believable character. Because you would get people, even people you admire, doing something like that, something that you don't admire. Um, so there's touches like that that, yeah, probably wouldn't happen today, but because of, because of its date... It works. Now, I do think that one of the biggest things that kind of lets the film down, uh, other than obviously not having a script by Shane Black, um, is the overabundance of characters. With each film, they, they, they put a new character in, but all of the old ones come back. So this film at times does feel a bit crammed. Um, and so as a result of that, characters such as uh, Rene Russo's character don't get a right lot to do. Now, she only really has a, a couple or so of big scenes. Um, she gets a really nice character scene with, with uh, Riggs when we see them together in their home life. I like that. I like that sequence. I like the chemistry between those two. 
Um, and she does get one scene in which she gets to kick ass, even though she's pregnant. So she she proves that even with a with a big belly, big baby inside, uh, she she's still a, a force to be reckoned with. Um, so yeah, it's a shame she doesn't get more screen time. But there you go. Another thing that kind of lets the film down is the overemphasis on the comedy side of things. Now the comedy has always been there in Lethal Weapon. Um, but it's always kind of arisen out of the situations. You know, to, when you think about how Shane Black writes things, he puts these guys within a plot, and the comedy kind of comes out of that, out of th through necessity, I guess. Um, whereas in this one, it does feel like a lot of the scenes are simply there for hijinks and for comedy, and you could take them out, and you wouldn't really notice. It'd just be a shorter film. Um, so that, to me, is a bit... Yeah, it, it makes the... It makes the plot feel a bit more plodding, like you could get there faster, a lot faster. Um, and why they felt the need to bring back the psychiatrist character once again, I don't know. You know, she's in all four films. Fair play to them, you know, they, they clearly felt like a family on this film, so they, they wanted to bring everyone back. Um, but for the sake of the story, it's a bit too much. Uh, so yeah, I'd have, I'd have left her out, and I, as I would have with the last film before this. Uh, overall, I think this is a marginally better film than Lethal Weapon 3. Uh, I, I, few things about it I don't like, obviously, which I've just mentioned, but yeah, a little bit better than Lethal Weapon 3, but still not up to the heights of Lethal Weapon 2 and, and obviously the first film. Uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. What about you? Have you seen it? And if so, what did you think about it? Comment below, let me know, and until next time, thanks for watching.